You're listening to To The Spirit Podcast. Hi, friends, and welcome to The Spirit. I'm back. And I'm Steph. Hi, Steph. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good, now that our voices are much sexier. We've upgraded our gear. Hell yeah. <laughs> now you can actually hear Steph. I know. I have the lowest voice in the world. I think I could be in the Guinness Book World Record. It's hard for me to project my voice. And I come from a family of low voices. Well, no, because Tim, very projected voice. My dad had like a broadcaster type voice. Me, I'm struggling like I have. <laughs> I don't know. Well, today's show is about creatures and cryptids. I know we did animals. Now we're getting into the, I guess, the mythological Yeah, animals. well, are they, though? Because that's the difference between a cryptid and a creature. A cryptid, they think, scientifically exists. Yeah, and I think that they've had a few wins out there. That's why they keep it going. You know, they're, they're always looking into it. But a creature, well, those usually come from folklore or myth. Steph, did you know that there was a strange incident reported? And it occurred earlier this week in a community of Krakow when a concerned resident frantically... Wait, a crack house? No, <laughs> In Krakow, Poland. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. In Poland, in Krakow, when a concerned resident frantically phoned the city's Society for the Protection of Animals with a truly strange problem, a mysterious creature, she declared, had taken up residence in a tree across the block from her home, and the animal was so unsettling that people don't even open their windows because they're afraid it's going to enter the house. Do we insert Polish joke here? <laughs> <laughs> Insisting that the oddity was not a bird, the hysterical caller theorized it was possibly an iguana, which left the animal welfare group wondering if they were on the receiving end of a prank call, since such a creature could not survive the current cool temperatures in the city. Nonetheless, they reasoned that people often release pets that they no longer want to care for, and perhaps this would explain how such a reptile would end up in a tree. Well, upon their arrival... Workers from the organization set out searching for the mysterious creature that had so unnerved the caller and eventually came upon a oddity lurking over their heads in a lilac tree. Recounting the call on Facebook page, the group observed that the monster was small, brown, and sadly appeared to sport neither a head or any limbs. Their concern for the creature's well-being quickly turned to amusement when they got a better look at it and realized it was actually a croissant. <laughs> Someone reported this yeah. to an authority. <laughs> this is a this is is this what you'd call a stereotypical Polish joke right here. <laughs> Sorry about I come from a generation oh. where there was always Polish jokes. I feel bad that for some reason they were picked on, but this just really, really strikes me. <laughs> they speculated that the pastry was more than likely tossed out of someone's window and wound up stuck in the tree, where it inadvertently set off panic which brought them to the site, insisting that the tale was true and the caller's concern was genuine. The group stressed that she did the right thing by reporting the creature, even though it wound up being a croissant. <laughs> who would who would throw... You know, it was a Polish croissant, and they're like, ew, gross. <laughs> what, the what does a Polish croissant taste like? I don't know. It probably has no butter in it or something. <laughs> like a pierogi? <laughs> it's a potato croissant. <laughs> A potato roll. <laughs> it's a cabbage and potato croissant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we should probably talk about what the difference are, what, what cryptids are. Cryptids are animals which are generally believed to be legendary in mainstream biology. Now, these animals are studied by people known as cryptozoologists who are either interested in proving that they exist or interested in studying the myths and cultural beliefs which have arisen around such animals. Strictly speaking, cryptids are not mythological creatures like unicorns, for example. They're not considered cryptids because they are accepted as myths. Rather, cryptids are animals which some people think could actually exist. In some cases, cryptids are rediscovered extinct species or animals which people originally thought were hoaxes. In these cases, the animal is considered a cryptid because only a few unverified sightings have occurred. But eventually enough, Scientific evidence accumulates to prove that the animal really does exist, in which case it's no longer a true cryptid. One example of this is, I don't know if I can say this, but it's a fish that was thought to be extinct until living versions were discovered. 
Another is the platypus, which we all know. Mm-hmm. Actually, European scientists thought that that was a hoax until they really well, found... Well, the gorilla also, they thought they didn't exist. Yeah. So other cryptids include humanoid creatures such as abominable snowman, yeti, sasquatch, Bigfoot, <laughs> Loch Ness monster, or Nessie, chupacabra, drop bear, northwest tree octopus, and the Montauk monster. What's the Montauk monster? I have no idea. I didn't even look into that. I probably should have. Hmm. I feel like I've heard of it. I just don't know what it is. But there's a lot more. I, I, I'll have to see if I have it here. But there's stuff everywhere. Yeah. Which I was surprised. Because <laughs> I'm thinking what you just listed was, that was it. No. I didn't know that there was a sea creature scene. Well, not a sea creature, but a like water monster or something. <laughs> seen in Seneca Lake. There's a Seneca Lake cryptid. Really? Yes. And they had a video of it. And it was very compelling. Now, I've heard of Champ, which is the Lake Champlain yep, monster. Yep. And uh, they've seen things there. I haven't seen any video yet about that. But the one in Seneca Lake, it looked big and it was moving kind of like like swimming through the, the on top of the water. They did say it could be giant... Eels? Not eels. What are those fish that are like bottom feeder fish? Krakens. Krakens. <laughs> Crackheads. <laughs> Um, um, I know what you're saying. They're not plankton. Um, it's a big fish. They are very prehistoric looking. Sturgeon. Okay. Okay. So the lakes around here have sturgeon. I've seen one actually at a fish hatchery and it wasn't big. It looks like a shark. So the Seneca Lake monster, they were describing it as it possibly could be sturgeon. And sturgeon can get up to like eight, nine feet, maybe bigger. So imagine there was a couple of them together mm-hmm. on the surface of the water. They have very scaly, you know, like uh, bodies are kind of scaly looking and hard. And they have kind of a shape like a shark in a weird way. If I saw that when I was in a lake, I'd freak out. Well, yeah, I wouldn't. They're not really that dangerous. I've heard in Florida that they've hurt people when they're driving by on their boats and they'll leap into the air. Someone's gotten hit by them. Mm -hmm. They're huge and they're massive. They said that's a possibility that it's Lake Sturgeon, which sounds like it, but the the way he describes it, there's a real legitimate story that a lot of people that were like um, important people, you know, that just reputation was everything. They weren't going to lie about it. So they're all on this boat and they see something out in the distance that looks like a turned over boat, right? Now that's big. So they went to it to find out if there was anybody in the water, if they had to rescue anyone. When they get there, it just sunk them. Like, the boat did? It wasn't a boat. It was like a big monster. <laughs> so, so to me, that doesn't sound like sturgeon. And this happened quite some time ago. But the person that had told the story, he's been searching ever since. He really thinks there's something there. How do we know that it wasn't a submarine? In Seneca Lake? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> it's the Russians. <laughs> well, have you ever heard of the Alma? A-L-M-A? Nope. And that's a creature. Here we go with the ape Like, There's a few of these. Uh, This is an ape-like appearance that inhabits the mountains in Central Asia, which was up to a few years ago part of the Soviet Union. Although not as well known as the Yeti and the Bigfoot stories about the Alma suggest that it is a creature more akin to a hairy human than an ape. Professor Boris Porchnev of the Moscow Academy of Sciences published a description of the creature based on the detailed stories he had gathered from people who had seen it. There's no underlayer of hair so that the skin can sometimes be seen, says a report. The head rises to a cone-shaped peak. It continues, and the teeth are more like a man's, but larger, with the canines more widely separated. Porchinov's description also noted that the Alma can swim in swift currents and run as fast as a horse. Breeding pairs remain together, living in holes in the ground. Their diet consists of small animals and vegetables, and they have mainly a nocturnal nature. It's also noted in the report that Almos have a distasteful smell. A traveler in Mongolia called N.M. Pazwalski gathered the first stories of Elma in 1881. He was also responsible for the discovery of the Mongolian wild horse. Sightings of the Elma were reported during the Second World War by refugee soldiers and prisoners of war. There have been reports that Elmas have been shot and killed. One such report happened during a clash with the Japanese by a Russian reconnaissance unit in Mongolia. Two shadowy figures were shot when they failed to respond in a challenge by centuries. Unfortunately, because of the war, the bodies described as having the appearance of a strange anthropod ape covered with long red hair and about the size of a man 
could not be returned to Moscow for thorough investigation. There were several expeditions that were undertaken to look for the Alma while the Soviet Union was still together. However, although many interesting stories turned up, there was little in the way of unusual artifacts. Lack of hard evidence led Russian scientists to become disillusioned about the value of searching for Almas. Dr. Pashnev did speculate that Alma could perhaps one day be the last surviving group of Neanderthal man. Indeed, the areas where reports of Alma sightings have taken place have yielded a number of Neanderthal artifacts, thus lending some weight to Pashnev's hypotheses. Political instability and the dismemberment of the Soviet Union has done little to facilitate further research in the area, so for the time being, the Alma remains an enigma. How is that spelled? Is that A-L-M-A? Yeah. It's weird because I think Alma is like a Latin word that means hidden. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. It's interesting. All right. This is called the thylacine. No. Okay. It looks like it could be a real thing. It's real. Okay. Also known as the Tasmanian tiger or wolf, the thylacine was a large meat-eating marsupial that lived in Australia. It had... A long, stiff tail, dark stripes on its back and rump, and a pouch similar to other marsupials. Isn't that weird, the way it looks that it actually has a pouch? Yeah. Um, So it has a pouch like a koala and a kangaroo. It was driven to extinction by human activity and the introduction of wild dogs into the Australian mainland. The last confirmed wild thylacine was spotted in Tasmania in 1932 while the last captive one died in Tasmania's Hobart Zoo in 1936. Though widely considered to be extinct, sightings of this strange creature do still occur occasionally. So I think it's kind of sad that um, it went extinct. It's a very unique well, looking. There's it's kind of scary of looking, and it's very skinny, like rib cage. But you can kind of see where, like, people see strange things. When mm-hmm. you look at that, that's weird looking. It is weird it's looking. It's kind of like a, doesn't look like a hyena, but... I would say kinda strange, does. strange does. like a hyena. Yeah. But imagine it has a pouch. <laughs> yeah, like a kangaroo. <laughs> and doesn't walk like a kangaroo. It doesn't look like a koala. But it's supposedly gone. Hopefully there's more left. But these are the type of, you know, if someone sees something strange, and uh, I wouldn't just blow it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Have you heard of the alpine tatzel worm? Uh, no. Okay. It's described as being between 60 and 90 centimeters or two to three feet in length, having the thickness of a man's arm. It's believed to be an undiscovered species of an amphibian or reptile. It's thought to dwell in the Swiss, Bavarian, and Austrian Alps of Central Europe. The local people refer to it as the tatzel worm, clawed worm, or Stalin worm, hole dwelling worm. The strudel worm? It could be the strudel (laughs) worm. There have been many different stories about limb counts. Some descriptions suggest that the species only has a single front pair of legs. Some say it has two pairs of legs, and some say it has no limbs at all. The general appearance of the tatzel worm is likened to a worm like lizard or salamander. Some zoologists have suggested a link between the American Gila monster. You mean Gila monster? Yeah, Heloderma suspectum, and the tatzel worm. The latter being a species of poisonous lizard. There may be also a link with the grass snake, a large legless lizard from southern Europe. Now, I was a big believer in the Loch Ness Monster as a kid, were you? Yeah. I mean, you hear about it. You've seen little photos that look like it could be something. Well, a lot of attention always went to that guy in the photo, and that was a proven hoax, the famous photo. He caught out like a piece of wood and sent it floating out there. Faked it all. Yeah, but... There's always been a history at that, like, which I didn't know. I kind of, like, summed everything up to that photo for some reason. That's when it started, but it wasn't. There was always a history of that there. And uh, to this day, people think that, you know, they see things, they're not sure what it is. But as a kid, I really wanted to believe it. And I really wanted to believe there was a dinosaur seen in Africa. That's another... (laughs) (laughs) That's another animal from cryptozoology. This... I think it's in the Congo, but there was a movie kind of based off of it in the 80s. It was called Baby. Yeah. The movie was like my favorite. I watched that movie, I swear, a thousand times. I really wanted to believe this was real. I want it to happen to me. I used to like, when I'd watch it, kind of place myself. Like almost like I was. about encountering the baby dinosaur? Like this is me. (laughs) And I I had that same feeling about the Loch Ness Monster. I just wanted it. To To be be your friend? Not to be my friend, but I wanted it to exist. And I would put anything they put out there about it, I believe it, no matter what. 
So <laughs> that's just the way I was as a kid, I guess. Did you believe in anything crypto? Mm, no, I never really went there, I don't think, as a child, which is interesting. The creatures and the cryptos and everything I didn't get into until I was older. What about Batman? <laughs> well, there's Mothman. Batman is a bat-winged humanoid and a phenomenon that comes from Russia, the Far East, around the... Oh my god, I, my Russian's really bad, but let's just say the Cray territory. A hunter called AI, current Sav, spotted the beast several years ago in the immense Taiga forest as it flew over his fire. The Batman, or don't even try that Russian, which translates as flying human, is also famed for its eerie cry likened to a woman's scream but ending in a howl that's creepy so it's not the batman we know and love no and i've seen some big ass bats like really on the internet on the internet yeah, i mean like fruit bats are big they've had pictures of that one bat that just circulated a few years ago it was hanging upside down and that was like the size of a human it was about five foot something no yes yeah you guys are you sure this wasn't one of those like no, go you want me to Google it? Yeah, it was one of those, like, clickbait scams. No, no. <laughs> it doesn't look yeah, real. Yeah, like, look. The one she's holding is humongous. But it's not as big as a person. That's not, keep going. Yeah, that's the one that they caught. This is, people are horrified over this giant bat. Yeah, it's like over five feet tall. I want to see a person next to it. Do you think a person's going to go stand next to that thing? <laughs> well, here's one, but that's not the same one. Let me see. Like, that looks fake to me. No, they're real. He's got berries. It can't be that far-fetched that there's an actual Batman. It's almost like a monkey with wings. Yeah. That's weird. But not the type of Batman that lives in Gotham. Giant squid. I don't have a, an awesome picture, awesome fake picture like you do. <laughs> Listen, anyone can go Google that for themselves and do the research. <laughs> this is another creature that I still love the tales of people being out in the sea and you hear about the giant squid. There are giant squid, though. Yeah, there, there was. Are. Oh, my God. And I didn't really realize that. I thought that was a myth. The Kraken. They haven't really. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they're. No, they're very dangerous. They, in fact, a lot of fishermen say they're more scared of the squid than they are sharks. I can see why. Because they could just drag you down. They have so many legs. Down. So many legs. Well, I remember reading one article where they found a leg. Giant squids can grow up to 43 feet in length. Holy, that's big. It's because they have to fight those, like, uh, sperm whales down in the deep depths. <laughs> down in the alien ocean. Well, they find they find whales with uh, the markings from the squids on them. I so believe. that's a so big this is squid. like a Godzilla battle under the sea. Yeah. So 43 feet in length and may have been one of the inspirations behind the Kraken, a many-armed sea monster Norwegian myth. In September 2005, Japanese researchers baited and filmed a live specimen in its natural ocean habitat for the first time. The creature struggled for four hours before finally breaking free, losing an 18-foot long arm in the process. 18 foot! My cousin's boat wasn't even that big. That's humongous. <laughs> that would just... It would grab you. It would grab the boat. And, and drag his it beak under. would just like be like munching on you really hard. Oh and then God. you'd be taken down to 20,000 leagues, leagues under the, the sea. sea. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. Well, that is scary. while you're wrestling that, then you can come upon the death birds as you're trying to come up. Because the death birds are mysterious creatures that are in fact a variety of bat that have a penchant for human blood. This is how they attain their name, death birds. The archaeologist Byron D. Prorock is said to have learned of this phenomenon in 1936 while traveling through southern Ethiopia. The death birds were said to inhabit the Devil's Cave, a cursed cavern near Lake Gempty. It was here that the D. Prorock encountered the bats. And you can also see this under Zooform Phenomena.
So we've got death birds. We've got giant ass squids. We've got Nessie. We've got human-sized bats. Which, obviously, the death birds are related to the bats. Freaky. Then there's the Dover Demon. Now, the Dover Demon is described as a peculiar entity with glowing orange eyes, standing about three to four feet high, with rough, peach-colored, hairless skin. Like the Cree Indian accounts of the Manageshi, the Dover Demon is said to have a disproportionately large head in comparison to its body. Its legs and arms are reported as being long and thin, with slender and supple fingers. The creature was reported by a 17-year-old called Bill Barlett on the 21st of April, 1977, around 10.30 p.m. While driving with two friends through Dover, Massachusetts, his car headlights suddenly illuminated a peculiar entity picking its way along a stone wall at the side of the road. The creature has never been satisfactorily (laughs) identified, although there is some similarity to the Manageshi creature that is native to the mythology of the Cree Indians of eastern Canada. He sounds like a cereal character, like something you'd see on a cereal box. Another creature that's real, I think kind of people didn't believe, are these giant salamanders. Yeah, they are native to China, Japan, and the eastern United States. Why do we have them? (laughs) That's what I want to know. Have you caught a salamander when you were a kid? No. They're small. They can maybe be seven, eight inches. Mm -hmm. Do you want to guess what the giant salamander of uh, South China, how big that one is? I'm going to say four feet. Up to 5.9 feet. So you're close. That is humongous. (laughs) That was not close. (laughs) It's almost 10 feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's humongous. Wow. And uh, a lot of people didn't believe that they existed. But I guess it feeds at night on fish and crustaceans. And they live more than 50 years. At least they know that that they have in captivity. And they're called cryptobranchids. They have large folds of skin along their flanks. These help increase the animal's surface area, allowing them to absorb more oxygen from the water. They have four toes on the forelimbs and five on the hind limbs. They have pedomorphic traits, meaning their metamorphosis from the larval stage is incomplete, so the adults retain gill slits, although they also have lungs and lack eyelids. That sounds monstrous, doesn't it? (laughs) What they about, have, it says they have bad eyesight, though. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. That's an advantage to human. Human, one. Monster, zero. Have you seen the mon- the the guy that goes fishing for, like, unusual like, yeah. monsters? He he was looking for this, uh, like, a stingray, right? Mm-hmm. But they're in rivers. They're not in the ocean. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, it's a river monster show. Yeah. Yeah. And I had no idea that there was such a thing as stingrays in the river. And he, they caught one. Right, it was, and they pulled it up in the net, and it stressed out the stingray so much it started having babies right there, <gasps> and little baby like um, stingrays. stingrays were coming out of it, and it was like it was like a mothership, like an alien mothership coming out of the water it was so huge, and then little tiny baby stingrays just started spilling out of it. <laughs> she probably had to get rid of them quick. She's like, "Well, I'm gonna die soon. You yep. guys gotta go now. <laughs> yep. Live, my children." <laughs> well, there's the beast of Bodmin Moor. And it's a black panther-like creature that is believed to inhabit Bodmin Moor in Cornwall. Indeed, there have been 60 other big cat sightings recorded in the area since 1983. And experts believe there's a population of big cats in and around Cornwall. There have even been some sightings as far apart as Kent and Scotland. And even films have been taken of these beasts. However, there has been little physical evidence to support the sightings. That was until recently when a 14-year-old boy discovered a skull with large fangs in the River Fowey on Bodmin Moor in Cornwall. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the beast of Bodmin Moor. There was a whole thing, like, I remember, um, I don't know what show I saw it on, but it was years ago, and they were talking about the sightings of black panthers and things like that. Then there's the beast of Gavadin, which was described as being a huge wolf-like beast which killed its victims by savagely tearing out their throats before devouring their bodies or simply ripping them apart. The beast came to public attention between June of 64 and June of 67 when a large number of murders, mainly women and children, occurred in Gavadin, a place situated in the district of southeastern France. In February... The King of France in 1765 sent six highly trained bloodhounds to try to track down this creature. Unfortunately, they did not succeed. However, after two large wolves were killed in the area, 
the murders finally ceased. However, there are some who believe that the beast was more than just a bloodthirsty rabid wolf. In Game of Thrones, you know those dire wolves? Yeah. The way they depicted them in the show was ridiculously huge. I mean, they were all animated. There's no way they were that big. No, there definitely is uh, large wolves. So, well, the yes, well, that's the beast here I'm talking yeah. about. Well, while we're on the subjects of dogs, mm -hmm. the black dogs, you heard of those? No. Devil dogs? Hellhounds? Hellhounds, yeah. And these are creatures from around the United Kingdom. You have the black shuck, the striker howler, the muckle black tyke, and that's in Scotland. The mothay doog, Isle of Man, the mothay doog. The guily dog of darkness in Wales, and the bargwest in Yorkshire. Now, I'm saying all this incorrectly. So these creatures go by different names depending on their location throughout the British Isles, and they all share very well-defined traits. Allegedly, they're as large as Labradors, usually described as being black, often with shaggy coats. They are said to exude a distinctly sulfurous smell, and their crimson eyes glow like fire. Although appearing to be solid, they can apparently disappear at will, sometimes in a fiery explosion. And it's said that anyone who touches one of these beasts usually dies shortly afterwards. Even the act of seeing the black dog is believed to be an omen of doom. These beasts are said to frequent more restricted localities, such as specific country lanes, churchyards, riverbanks. They're not known for straying very far from their established territory, as this is associated with ancient monuments or ley lines, marking our postulated channels of earth energy. Now, some of the explanations for black dogs include hallucinations, the misidentification of normal dogs, mental projection, entities that share origins with nature spirits, and other beings referred to by some investigators as elementals. Cyclical imprint apparitions, namely a form of moving energy trace, possibly the preserved images of real dogs from the past that have been triggered by meteorological effects, running like a third sign film. Hmm. Hellhounds. I've heard of hellhounds, but I didn't know much about them. I always thought they were like bad omen. Run like hell if you see him. Or maybe not run. There was Stand a your ground. <laughs> legend of the black dog that roamed the cemetery. Was that? That was a black dog outside of the door. <laughs> Sounds a lot like an orange cat, though. And it really is. <laughs> it's a tabby. <laughs> it's a podcast kitty. He wants in. We've had black panther sightings in New York State. Or at least cougar sightings. Oh, yeah. But, you know, Panther Lake, which is not far from here, that was always legend that there was black panthers and then there's also wolf sightings in new york state which supposedly there are none uh, but i mean i that i find that hard to believe that there's no wolves i do too as they might be coming down from can i mean like there's areas where they come down but we really don't have wolves i mean for a while they were just killed off the jersey devil is a supposed mythical creature of the new jersey pinelands has haunted New Jersey and the surrounding areas for the past 260 years. This entity has been seen by over 2,000 witnesses. That's a lot of witnesses. Hmm. It's terrorized towns and caused factories and schools to close down. Many people believe that the Jersey Devil is a legend, a mythical beast that originated from the folklore of New Jersey Pine Barrens. Others disagree with this point of view. The following text will show that there's evidence to support the existence of an animal or supernatural being known as the Jersey Devil. The evidence consists of stories of the Jersey Devil's origin, the sighting, and the theories. There are many different versions of the birth of the Jersey Devil. One of the most popular legends said Miss Shrouds of Leeds Point, New Jersey, made a wish that if she ever had another child, she would want it to be a devil. Her next child was born misshapen and deformed. She sheltered it in the house, and so the curious couldn't see him. On a stormy night, the child flapped its arms, which turned into wings, and escaped out of the chimney and was never to be seen by the family again. Miss Bowen of Leeds pointed out that the Jersey Devil was born in the Shroud's house at the Leeds Point. Uh, another story that also placed the birth at Leeds Point said that a young girl fell in love with a British soldier during the Revolutionary War, and the people of Leeds Point cursed her. When she gave birth, she had a devil. Now, some people believe that the birth of the devil was punishment for the mistreatment of a minister by the Leeds folk. And another story places the birth in Estelville, New Jersey. Miss Leeds of Estelville, finding out that she was pregnant with her 13th child, shouted, I hope it's a devil. She got her wish. The child was born with horns, a tail, wings, and a horse-like head. The creature revisited Miss Leeds every day. She stood at her door and told it to leave. After a while, the creature got the hint and never returned. 
And then Burlington, New Jersey also claims to be the birthplace of the Jersey Devil. There's so many different tales of this. This is in 1735. Mother Leeds was in labor on a stormy night. Gathered around her were her friends. Mother Leeds was supposedly a witch, and the child's father was the devil himself. The child was born normal, but then changed form. It changed from a normal baby to a creature with hooves, a horse head, bat wings, and a forked tail. It beat everyone present and flew up the chimney. And it circled the villages and headed over towards the pines. And in 1740, a clergy exercised the devil for 100 years, and it wasn't seen again until 1890. So there's many versions between when it was born, the 6th, the 8th, the 10th, the 12th, the 13th. And was it born normal or deformed? The last thing that ties the legends together is the name Leeds. Whether it's the mother's name or Leeds was the birthplace, like Leeds Point, all the stories include the name Leeds. It's funny because this one I had found I never heard of, but okay. it's from um, British Columbia. It's a legend, and it's called a Cadborosaurus. <laughs> 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 but it's supposed to resemble a serpent with vertical coils or humps in tandem, kind of like Loch Ness, you know, that type of, mm -hmm. I think, resemblance. But then it says it has a horse-like head, kind of like the New Jersey Devil, I guess. I don't know. Weird. And long neck with a pair of small elevating front flippers. And either a pair of hind flippers or a pair of large webbed hind flippers fuse to form a large fan-like tail region that provides powerful forward propulsion. Well, then there's the taggy, and that's the Welsh equivalent of the Nessie, a.k.a. the Loch Ness Monster, found in mm -hmm. Scotland. It's believed to inhabit two lakes in Wales, and typically it's likened to a crocodile or a small plesiosaur. Is that what you were saying? A pleosaur? Plesiosaur. I'm not good with those dinosaur names. Reports of this creature has been around since the 1920s. So we've got the Teggy, the Nessie. There's a Chessie, too. And a Chessie. It's a Chesapeake Bay monster. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Cheddar Bay Biscuit That's monster. A... <laughs> those are the most dangerous kind. Well, they have an actual picture of it, Beck. They do? Oh, wow. <laughs> He's all glittery like a, like a disco ball at a child's party. Okay. <laughs> Chessie is a sea monster said to live in the midst of the Chesapeake Bay. Claims of sightings appear in local media and regionally themed books from 1936 onward. Over time, the figure developed into an environmental icon associated with the ecological health of the Chesapeake Bay and continues to play a role in modern popular culture, like this kids' party. That <laughs> the earliest purported sightings of a Chessie-like creature may have been from a military helicopter flying over Bush River in 1936. Something reptilian and unknown in the water was observed by the helicopter's crew, which is kind of a cool story. This thing was about 75 yards away, at right angles from our boat. At first, it looked like something floating on the water. It was black, and the part of it that was out of the water seemed about 12 feet long. It has a head about as big as a football. That's not big. <laughs> <laughs> and shaped somewhat like a horse's another horse head it sounds like stewie from family guy <laughs> it it turned its head around several times almost all the way around so it's got like a, a neck like a an owl kind of turn its head around In 1978 witnesses claimed to have seen chessy near S southern maryland's culvert cliff state park and in the potomac river in westmoreland county virginia so I guess it travels, <laughs> gets far. <laughs> and it probably has brothers and sisters and cousins like Nessie and yeah, Tessie and Chessie. And the Cadbury egg. <laughs> and the Cadbury egg. <laughs> well, you've got all those monkey things you were talking about because you've got uh -huh. the Gurin, who's, who's like the Yowie. And he's a creature described as shaggy, red-haired ape, man. Of course, why are they always red-haired? Standing five to six feet high with extremely big feet. The Gurin is a mystery man beast reported from Asia and the mountains in central China. Cryptozoologists believe that it could be a certain species of orange orangutans called Gigantopithecus. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I have a lot of monsters in this, in this one. I mean, there's the lager fijol... fijol <laughs> I, Don't even bother. I know. Between I, the Russian and the Icelandic, there's no way we can get through it. So it's a lake monster. Let's see if this one has a horse head. The first sighting is generally conceded to be the 1345 marvel seen at 
that name that I can't pronounce, <laughs> Century Chronicle. So it was in the newspaper, I guess. According to the folktale published in John Arneson's collection, 1862, a heath worm type of slug kept with gold grew into a monster inhabiting the lake. Similar, a heath worm creature is said to live in the fresh water of Iceland below sea level. Glacial fed lake, which has very poor visibility as a result of siltation. The creature is described as longer than a bus, or 40 feet, and has been reported outside the water, lying coiled up or slithering into the trees. It is a many humps type of lake monster, <laughs> rather than the simply serpentine type, for example, the Loch Ness Monster. The Lagerfjolt worm <laughs> has been sighted several times in modern times, including in 1963 by the head of the Icelandic National Forest Service, and I can't say that word. Well, you know what's real if the Forest Service saw it. I don't know, but they have fairy... I mean, they also have fairy villages and areas in there, and they have a lot of beliefs. That's true. Contractors laying a telephone cable measured a large shifting mass near the eastern shore when performing preliminary depth measurements, and when they later retrieved the non-functional cable, found that it was broken where it had lain over the anomaly. Brought the cable up, it was broke, which is kind of... <laughs> Saying, like, it bit it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Then you've got the Zooglodonts. These creatures are supposedly extinct serpentine whales, and they're able to move about on land for short periods of time and for short distances. Can you imagine being on a beach and a whale just comes up and starts walking around? Yeah. <laughs> Zooglodon. <laughs> what the heck? How, how do they come up with the name Zuglodon? I have no idea. You know, when you were saying there's so many of these, mm -hmm. there literally are so many of them that we could be here all day. Well, listeners, thanks for being with us. Thanks for hearing the lawnmowers and the motorcycles and the cats meowing and everything going on. I'm not sure if you're actually hearing this, but we're hearing it. This lawnmower is five miles down the road. Our mics are <laughs> awesome. <laughs> If you hear any EVPs coming through, let us know, because these microphones seem to be otherworldly, interdimensional. If you want to get a hold of us, shoot us an email at tothespiritpod at gmail.com. We'd be really appreciative if you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And listeners, beware of the dark pool at the bottom of our hearts, for its icy black depths dwell strange and twisted creatures at best not to disturb. To the Spirit Podcast. Supernatural science. Alien. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. Psychic. Mystic. Spirit. Divine source. Heaven. The dead. It's magic.